Hi everybody, this is Jamie Lafreniere from Fox Valley Symphony. We are taking some time to do Amplifier Signal with our friends in the nonprofit area of Fox Valley region. And we're all working hard to keep our community fabulous. And one of the people and one of the groups helping us do that is Catalpa Health. And I'm with Mary Downs this morning. She's president and CEO of Catalpa Health. Hi, Mary. Good morning. How are you doing? Well, how about you? I'm doing all right. We're all hanging in there. Even though yeah, the number, yeah. I'm not happy with the numbers in our area right now. I got to tell you the truth. Yeah, I know. They're pretty alarming. Um, they really are. So we all just really need to do what we can to stay safe. Um, masks, social distance, make good choices. That's right. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about Catalpa Health and your programs. Sure. Well, so Catalpa was formed a number of years ago to provide mental health services to kids. So basically, we serve children almost from birth all the way through about 18-ish um, when they're done with high school or maybe their very, very beginning of college. And we provide a number of different services to those children and to their families. So we provide therapy. Um, we also provide psychological testing. We provide psychiatry, which is, um, to put it in other terms, it's really helping diagnose things that might require medication and then helping manage that medication. So we have um, physicians and other providers who provide that service. Um, we also have something called an intensive outpatient therapy program for children who need something between therapy and inpatient hospitalization or who have maybe been inpatient and then are uh, trying to step back down from that level of care. Um, and we provide those services in three different clinics in Appleton, Oshkosh, and Wapaka. And then prior to COVID, um, we also had therapists in over 50 schools around the area. Um, and so since COVID, we're still serving kiddos in those schools. It's just that we're using telemedicine to do that. That is, um, you touch a lot of the community and you do so much to help people. Um, sadly, of course, as we know right now, things have to change a little bit. You're, you're probably losing a little bit of that one-on-one -on -one time and that really personal connection. So how are, how are you guys having to change what you do because of COVID and the shutdown? Yeah, well, I'll tell you, it was really kind of a, um, a disheartening day when we realized that we were going to have to close the clinic back in March. Um, and so what we did as quickly as we could, and it was an amazing uh, example of terrific teamwork across our entire team, was we figured out how to provide telemedicine services instead. Um, so telemedicine is primarily video-based, um, although in cases it can be uh, just phone-based. And um, so in two weeks time, we figured out, we found a technology that we could use. Um, we very quickly trained people, the therapists and the, the other providers, the prescribers, how to use it. And then we also had to go through and really figure out um, all of the processes that support that. So how do you get signatures um, in that kind of environment? Right. And um, so there were really, there were only two weeks where we weren't able to provide services, but since April, our volumes have really been um, ramped up and we're seeing as many kids as we did last year. Wow. Um, wow. We're doing it through telemedicine. Uh, you know, and the thing is that we've also surveyed parents, um, particularly those parents of, of kiddos who would be coming in for psychiatric services and medication management. And um, they love telemedicine. They want us to be able to continue to do it. And when we asked them why, um, COVID wasn't even the number one reason. That was number two. But the first, the, the primary reason was the convenience of it. Yeah, because, you know, in a traditional, um, you know, outside of COVID, somebody might have to leave work, pick up their child from school, come to the clinic, have you visit, and then kind of do the same thing in reverse. And this eliminates so many barriers for people. Um, so even with the kids that we're serving in schools right now, um, you know, and as we know, that's also been um, kind of a roller coaster for different districts. Some started virtually, some have had to move to virtual. And the good news is, is if we're providing telemedicine services, it doesn't matter where that child is. So if they're learning at home, we can work with them. If they're learning in school, um, if the school has some of the right support mechanisms in place, we can serve them there as well. It's really incredible to hear silver lining stories like this, how people are finding new ways to do it and they're finding that, you know, it can become part of who they are now. Yes. Yeah. And, you know, and again, it's, it's been a learning curve because um, therapists weren't trained to provide care that way. And so we recently, thanks to support from the community, 
also have had all of our therapists and providers, as well as a lot of our client support representatives, go through specific training on delivering telemental health services. Um, to help them feel more comfortable and to make sure that we're really, uh, you know, that we're maximizing the effectiveness and the efficiency of the services that we're providing. That's so much good work. And I'm so excited that you can still do it. Even, even during the shutdown, you can do it even more. So that's, that's a fantastic, that's a great outcome. Yes. So if, if people wanted to um, use your services or find out what's available, where could they find that information? Yeah. So certainly people can call us um, at our main number. Um, they can also reach us. There's, there's a, a wide variety of ways to reach us um, at our website. So I would actually really refer that that as a great starting point, catalpahealth.org. Um, so there's different ways to connect with us there. Um, and then they can also, we do have a presence on social media as well. Um, so that's how somebody would reach out to, uh, if they wanted to get an appointment, get services. Um, and if people want to help the organization, there's also a way to donate going out to our catalpahealth.org page. There's a way to give online. And that makes a huge difference uh, because about half the kids that we serve come from low income backgrounds. And um, we don't, uh, uh, so we want to make sure that we can continue to provide services to them. And sometimes we also need to do things that supplement the therapeutic process. So they may not have art supplies at home. Um, and so we've been able to create therapy kits, for instance, to send out so we can still serve them well during this period where they can't, where we can't be face to face with them. That's wonderful. So would you say that's the number one thing that the general public can do right now to help you is would be to go on your website and make a donation? That would be terrific. Yes, that is. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for everything you're doing in the community for all of our kids. And you're still doing it and you're doing it even better. So I'm so impressed by everything you guys do as always. So thank you yeah. so much for that. Well, thank you. And thanks for giving me the opportunity to tell the story because we have a fabulous team of work um, and they're making a huge lives, a huge difference in the lives of the children that we serve. And so it's great to be able to tell that story. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Mary. Yep. Thank you. Thank you.